Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about these incredible discoveries in regards to fundamental physics. And more specifically, we're actually going to be combining two different discoveries which in a sense suggests that our understanding of fundamental physics is still not really perfect because both discoveries suggest that something else is going on in the universe that we don't really understand. And what I'm actually going to be discussing is the very recent announcement from the Fermilab of the so-called G-2 experiment that has been confirmed officially to have something unusual going on in it, and also this completely other discovery from CERN in Switzerland, which also suggested something else going on with a completely different particle in a completely different experiment. Both discoveries were made only approximately a week apart, and both to some extent are kind of groundbreaking, at least for the particle physicists. For us, for normal people, we still don't really know what all of this means. But, as always, let's start with the baby steps. So today, in modern physics, the so-called standard model of particle physics is probably the best model we have for the world around us. Basically, the 17 different subatomic particles you see right here more or less represent what we believe happens in the world around us, at least when it comes to particle interaction with the idea known as QCD or quantum chromodynamics being responsible for explaining how all of these subatomic particles interact with one another. And over the years, over the past few decades really, a lot of different experiments conducted in various particle accelerators for the most part have been consistently proving this idea over and over. All of the theoretical predictions such as for example the famous Higgs boson were eventually confirmed by various experiments in for example CERN inside the Large Hadron Collider located in Switzerland. Now, all of these experiments over the years, once again, allow the scientists to quite confidently say that our understanding of the world, and specifically the standard model of physics, for the most part seem to have been correct. But the model was obviously still not perfect. For example, it still didn't really explain very well how gravity works or how objects are able to attract each other. It also didn't really explain the mysteries of the universe such as dark matter, but more importantly there were some experiments that created the results that were kind of difficult to explain. And one such famous example from 1990s was what's known as the Brookhaven experiment, although according to Google it's also some sort of a VR shooter game which I don't think I'll ever be playing because it kind of looks scary. Anyway, that one experiment created a tiny problem for the particle physicists which for the past few decades they've been kind of trying to figure out. But what exactly is this problem and why is it a problem? Well, it really has something to do with the predictions of one of these subatomic particles. And specifically this particle right here known as muon. As you can see it's pretty much the cousin of electron except that it's dramatically more massive, like 200 times more massive. But in every other respect it is very similar to electron. As a matter of fact, other properties like spin and electric charge are exactly the same as an electron, so the only main difference here being the mass. And one of the main reasons we're not really as familiar with muons compared to electrons is actually because we haven't really found a practical use for them yet. Electrons are obviously used everywhere, that's how electricity works. But for muons, one of the only uses we have for them so far are, for example, various types of penetrating scanners, such as ground penetrating scanners, which muons can do much better than electrons because they're basically more massive and can easily go through matter and thus detect objects much deeper in the ground. As a matter of fact, right now, as I'm speaking to you and as you're listening to me, or more specifically in the area around one square meter around you, about 10,000 muons go through that area every single minute. And the way that they form is through the interaction of cosmic rays coming from very powerful quasars, supernova and a lot of other powerful objects out there with the upper atmosphere of planet Earth. And as these elements strike the upper atmosphere, the muons that are generated as a result go through pretty much everything including you and including the ground underneath. And some of them can actually even go through the entire planet entirely. So muons are generally really good at penetrating things. And so over the years the scientists have learned quite a lot about them and one of the properties that is known to scientists about muons is that if you were to place them in the magnetic field they would basically start spinning. And this spin itself is known as the G factor with the G factor for muon being G-2. So next time you hear someone say muon G-2 that's basically what they're referring to. They're referring to this predicted value of a muon spinning inside the magnetic field but it turns out that this value is actually not really 2. 
with the main reason being virtual particles predicted by the quantum physics. As these virtual particles start to appear everywhere, they actually interact with the spin of muons and end up increasing the value by just a little bit. So it's not really 2, it's more like 2.002331 and so on. And this value that you see right here was the predicted value from the most recent very very thorough analysis from 2020 that was released by a lot of scientists working together. Now this is a mathematical prediction value and it just so happens that that experiment I mentioned previously, the Brookhaven experiment, found this value to be a little bit different. Something wasn't really adding up. And so for the past few decades, the scientists in different labs were trying to recreate these results with the Fermilab, whose video I'm using here, essentially even getting a completely new super powerful magnet just to study this effect, just to find out if there is something going on after all. And well, as you can probably imagine, after years and years of studies, they finally have the results. And the results, well, let me show you the picture to summarize this. The results sort of confirm the original Brookhaven result and definitely go against the predicted model that was just confirmed last year. And even though the actual difference is really really minuscule, the experimental results here don't really align with the standard model predictions. The difference is quite significant. Which means that both experiments found some sort of an anomaly suggesting either A, the 17 subatomic particles we have here do not necessarily explain the whole world around us. There might be some other 18th hidden particle that was just discovered. Or B, something completely different, something that nobody really understands yet, is happening to the spin of these muons, which might be some sort of a fundamental discovery in regards to muons that nobody has ever made before. Either way, for the particle physicists, this is one of the biggest groundbreaking discoveries of the last 50 years. But to make sure that this is a real discovery and not some sort of fluke, because there is still a tiny tiny chance that maybe this was a mistake, and specifically here we're talking about 1 in 3 million chance, the scientists are going to be conducting this experiment 5 times in total. And if after 5 times they still get the same results, well in that case there's definitely something going on. And so in that sense it's a discovery that doesn't have an explanation or even theory behind it. Nobody really knows what's happening here. But that's just one of the discoveries. Remember in the beginning I mentioned there were two discoveries? Well, the second one is completely unrelated, although maybe somewhat related. And by the way, check out the video from Fermilab if you would like to learn a little bit more detail about this discovery as well. But anyway, so Fermilab discovered one thing, but CERN in Switzerland discovered something entirely different and also unexplained. And in this case it's kind of related to the main premise of the Large Hadron Collider, or basically its main purpose. Its main purpose is to study hadrons, it's to study the particles that are made out of elementary particles. So in this case, if we take one of the quarks, specifically an up quark, and if we combine it with a down quark and another down quark, we're going to get a neutron. If we combine two up and one down quark, we're going to get a proton. Those are hadrons. Hadrons are basically the larger particles that are made from subatomic particles. But we don't have to combine three of them. What if we combine one up and one down? We still are going to get a hadron, but it's not going to be stable and it's actually going to fall apart, creating something entirely different. And so that's pretty much what CERN scientists have been doing for years and years and years now, and that's kind of the main purpose of the experiments there. They try to create hadrons, they try to destroy them, they try to collide them, and then try to see what happens. But a lot of this is also based on various theories, and many of these theories have been confirmed over and over and over again. And one of these theories is about this one hadron known as Beauty Meson. Okay, more terms. So this one is basically created from combining one down quark and one bottom anti-quark. So here we actually started using a little bit of antimatter. Although even here you can combine some other quarks to create slightly different beauty mesons. And just generally, to create a meson we need some sort of a quark and an anti-quark. But it cannot be the same anti-quark because then it just eliminates and creates energy. Anyway, long story short, the predicted model for these beauty mesons suggests that they do fall apart, creating an equal amount of electrons and once again muons. And more specifically they should be producing an equal amount of electrons and positrons or muons and anti-muons. And so here, if we were to take about 100 of these beauty mesons, with time, after only a few milliseconds, all of them should create approximately 50 electrons and approximately 50 muons. 
But as this paper that was recently released by certain scientists discovered, they don't. The data from this experiment suggests that a lot more electrons are produced compared to muons. And this once again suggests some sort of a problem with the theory and very likely suggests some sort of an unusual, not well understood and possibly completely unknown to us physics at work. Something that many scientists will be studying for years to come. Now, it could be related to the previous muon discovery, maybe muons are the actual culprits behind both of these discoveries, or maybe there is some sort of an unknown subatomic particle in existence that absolutely no one understands just yet, but at the same time, the real answer is that nobody knows. And this is of course the beauty of these modern experiments. Today we've reached a point where the experiments are so advanced and are so precise that it's very difficult to argue with some of these discoveries afterwards. And if the scientists have detected something, and especially if they've done it several times, it might indeed suggest new physics at work. And because we haven't really changed the fundamental physics for about 50 years now, in some sense for particle physicists, this is a groundbreaking discovery. But for us, for the normies, for people that don't really do particle physics, well, we don't really know what to think of this just yet. I mean, like I mentioned before, we don't even use muons in real life just yet. We don't really know what they're used for or what they can be useful for. But if muons one day do become as important as electrons, maybe then we might appreciate these discoveries a little bit more. For now though, it is more or less theory only. We still don't really know where all of this will lead and if it's actually going to help us explain the universe around us. Nevertheless, super exciting discoveries, very unusual how both discoveries happen around the same time, but hopefully in the next few years we'll know exactly what's happening here. Until then, that is pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. I wasn't really sure if I'm going to be able to explain everything in one video, but I guess I tried my best. But there are definitely going to be a lot of follow-up videos as we discover more and more about these studies. Check out everything in the description below, all of the relevant links, images and videos I've used there as well. And subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe support this channel on Patreon by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt or by joining the channel memberships. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.